Hey there, Care Blazers. Welcome back to the place where we talk about everything dementia. Dr. Natalie here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some ways that you can increase the chances of getting your loved one to a doctor's appointment if your loved one needs to go for a doctor's appointment, maybe is even overdue to go to their doctor's appointment, but for whatever reason, they just refuse to go and don't want to go. If you are struggling in some way to get your loved one to go to a doctor's appointment, then stay tuned. I think this video can help you out. But first, if you are new to Care Blazers TV, welcome. We would love to have you join the family. All you have to do is hit that little red subscribe button on your screen. It is completely free. It will alert you every Sunday when I post a new video. Also, be sure you stay tuned to the end of my video. I have a couple of exciting announcements about Care Blazers, new things that I'm starting, and I might have a blooper or two waiting for you back there. All right, now let's get started. How are we gonna get your loved one to go to a doctor's appointment? Refusing to go to the doctor is a pretty common experience for a lot of people caring for their loved ones with dementia. And the more you try to convince your loved one to go to the doctor or talk to them about going to the doctor, it can almost seem that your loved one with dementia gets more angry and irritable and frustrated that you're bringing this up. Before we get into a few of the practical tips you can try to get your loved one to go to a doctor's appointment, I really do want you to take a moment and put yourself in your loved one's shoes. First of all, who enjoys going to the doctor? I don't. I don't think many people enjoy going to the doctor, so it's not a pleasant experience regardless of what medical conditions you have. But if you happen to have dementia, a disease that creates confusion and it's hard to understand what's going on and you might not even understand that you have a problem with your thinking, that just makes it all that more scary and unpleasant to go to the doctor's appointment. With many difficult behaviors in dementia, being able to put yourself in their shoes a little bit and have some empathy and compassion about why your loved one might be doing those things or acting those ways, it helps us try to come up with a game plan and come up with a way to respond that is gonna be successful. So we're not working from a place of frustration and irritability. We are working from a place of empathy and compassion. Idea number one to help increase the chances that your loved one would go to the doctor is to take the focus off of the dementia. Instead, try presenting to your loved one that they're overdue for a doctor's routine checkup or that the doctor called and they wanna see them for a routine checkup or that the doctor wants to see if there are some things they can do to help improve their memory. So instead of saying, you have to go, you have dementia, something that many people don't want to hear and feel like there's nothing that can be done with that, just try making it very normal, like this is an expected routine follow-up visit that's overdue that needs to happen, or that the doctor really wants to focus on ways to help improve their memory, and maybe they'd be more likely to go to an appointment like that. Another idea is to take the pressure off of you and see if you can get your loved one's doctor's office involved. So maybe you call the, your loved one's doctor's office and you have the doctor's office call, ask for your loved one, and schedule a routine follow-up or schedule a blood pressure check or schedule a checkup just to see how they're doing. This might make your loved one a little more able to say yes, especially if your loved one's able to get to the phone and take the phone call from your loved one's doctor. And if you're taking your loved one to a doctor who works with geriatrics and specializes in dementia, this isn't gonna be an out of the ordinary request. They are going to understand. So see if you can get your loved one's doctor to call and ask to schedule a routine follow-up and your loved one might be more likely to go. Another twist to this is let's say for whatever reason your loved one's doctor's office just won't do this. Then see if you can get a friend or a family member to call as if they're the doctor's office to speak with your loved one with dementia and then schedule the appointment. So in this case, you would have already had an appointment scheduled in the books for your loved one, but you will just have your friend or neighbor or friend call and pose as the doctor's office to talk to your loved one and schedule that appointment. So again, it's taking a little bit of the pressure off you and putting it onto the doctor's office. 
and sometimes uh, older adults with dementia are more likely to be agreeable and to follow what a doctor's office says versus what you said because they often see you as somebody who's telling them to do things they don't agree with or getting in the way of things they don't really think they need help with, right? So whenever we can put it on somebody else, that can work out and might be a nice way to get your loved one more open to the idea. Another idea would be to see if your if your loved one with dementia has a close friend that they spend time with during the week. See if you can get that friend to help out in the cause. Perhaps your friend, your loved one's friend can bring up the fact that they have an upcoming doctor's appointment and that they're a little scared about it and that they don't really look forward to going to the doctor's appointment and asking your loved one if they've ever felt the same way. It's a safe, supportive environment to kind of talk about some of the feelings that come up when it's time to think about going to the doctor's office and that friend can help normalize those feelings. That friend can help say, yeah, I'm scared when I go too, but I know it's best for my help. Again, this is kind of taking a lot of the pressure off of you and trying to convince your loved one and asking a friend to do it. This could also be helpful. Okay, now this next idea I want to be very clear. I am not saying don't take your loved one to the doctor, but what I want you to ask yourself when you get really wrapped up into trying to get your loved one to go to the doctor, I want you to ask yourself, is this really important? Does my loved one actually have to go to the doctor in the very near future? What is this doctor's appointment going to accomplish? What is the goal of this doctor's appointment? Is this just a doctor's appointment because my loved one has dementia and I don't know what to do and it feels like they need a doctor's appointment or has the doctor's office been calling with something very specific that they want to take a look at and to address. Sometimes we just get so wrapped up into, oh, we have to see the doctor every six months or we have to see the doctor every four months or whatever the case may be that we get so focused on that that maybe we don't stop and actually think like, is this absolutely necessary? Is it necessary? I'm sure that we have all had the experience and especially you care placers, you've had the experience of getting your loved one dressed, getting them up early in the morning, trying to convince them to get in the car and go to the doctor's appointment, get to the doctor, wait forever in the waiting room, finally get into the exam room, speak to the doctor, you have 15, 20 minutes, you end up leaving the appointment and you ended up not getting any of your questions answered or you're not even quite sure what you got out of the appointment. Does that sound familiar? Sadly, I hear these kinds of stories a lot and so it's really important that before you start this uphill battle of trying to convince your loved one to go to the doctor, you're pretty sure and you've talked to your loved one's doctor that this is actually an important time that your loved one needs to go and here are the very clear things that are going to be addressed, right? We don't just want to go just for the sake of going. We want to make sure that it's going to do some good for your loved one with dementia and that it's necessary. Sometimes just letting that doctor's office know that your loved one has a really hard time getting there. They might be a bit more willing to do things over the phone or a bit more willing to kind of push some things that are not as urgent or necessary a little bit off into the distance to help your situation out. And finally, unfortunately, there are situations where no matter what you do, no matter how many of these tips you've tried, your loved one with dementia will just refuse to go to the doctor. They just will refuse and there's just no way you're going to get them into the car. There's no way you're going to be able to lie to them to get them to go to the doctor. It's just not going to happen. And sadly, in these cases, a lot of times there's just not much you can do. And what ends up getting them to the doctor, unfortunately, is something like a big fall that ended up resulting in a broken hip or another broken bone. And they end up getting to the hospital by ambulance. And then that leads to a whole domino effect of events like rehab, then doctor's visits and things like that. So just know that in some cases, um, getting your loved one to the doctor is just, it's nothing you're doing wrong. It just might not be able to happen no matter what you do. If you haven't already tried to check out your local area agency on aging, please do so. Some of these programs have a, a healthcare team that can do appointments, medical appointments, doctor appointments, healthcare appointments, general psychology appointments, physical therapy, nutrition therapy, social work. They send these providers to your loved one's home. It's very popular for people with dementia because it is so hard to get them to go to the doctor that the local area agency on aging may know of programs that will actually go out to your house and see your loved one there. 
Um, I personally currently work on a program like that and it turns out that a lot of people with dementia are more open to these visits. It feels a little bit more uh, approachable, comfortable, a little less scary because the person with dementia is in their environment and they don't have to leave into a place where it's really confusing. There's a lot of distractions, a lot of noises, and a lot of people they don't recognize and understand. So please look into that if you haven't already. All right, Care Blazers, I know we don't all live in a one-size-fits-all approach, so I'm hoping maybe one of these tips might be something that does work in your situation. But what I want to know is, have you run into this struggle with your loved one with dementia, and how did you handle it? What do you do or say to either help get your loved one more open to going to the doctor, or how do you make the doctor's day more pleasant for your loved one? What special treats or things do you do to help get your loved one to go to the doctor and help enjoy the doctor more often. I would love to know. Leave me a comment right below. If you have not joined my brand new Dementia Care Blazers Facebook community, go ahead and do that. It is a closed group. It is a safe place for Care Blazers to connect with one another, support one another, share tips and information. So you can get a link to that. I'll put it below in my video. Also, if you want to be a part of the CareBlazer Compassion Project, then please email me at careblazers at gmail.com. Give me your address. Let me know a little bit about your caregiving situation. I am randomly choosing people throughout the year to send a little bit of a CareBlazer Compassion Care Package. And if you think that you would like something like that at some point, go ahead and email me. And I would love to add you to the list of people that I randomly choose from. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you in some way. You guys keep up the awesome work, seriously. You guys are doing great, hang in there. Let me know what other questions you wanna hear from by leaving them below or by hopping on over to my Dementia Care Blazer community Facebook page. All right guys, bye. Get ah, to ah, place or um, ah, that can help make them stronger. And finally, I've been in this situation, well, and finally, I have personally um, been a part in a lot of situations, 